Hey guys, it is Spooky Noodles, and I am here with a writing blog. And uh, I didn't really do that much reading or writing, writing today. I did a lot of reading. Um, so I tried my best with the writing. I did as much as I possibly could. Kind of left off where I did yesterday. Um, I wrote around 700 words yesterday, and today I wrote. Uh, let's see here. Um, probably a thousand and three hundred, so probably thirteen hundred. Um, oh, sorry, my dog's moving in the background. Um, I wrote a little bit. Um, probably not enough to do like to you know um for a writing blog, but uh, I'm really forgetting words today. I was like typing, and I'd be like, "What's the word? What's the word?" And I'd be like, well, it's something like this word. And then I'd look up similes, or not similes, um, synonyms for that word. And then eventually I would find the word I'm looking for. So I'm like banging my head against a wall because it takes so much time to remember a word when you could just be writing, you know? If I just, every word came to me, then I would be done with this book already. But uh, that's not the case. Um... It's taken me forever to write this book and I'm only like uh, let's see I'm on page 143 and actually now that I'm looking at this is this even double spaced I don't think it's double spaced hold on it could be more than I'm fixing it now hold on yeah, it's much more than 143 pages. It is 100, okay, maybe not much more, but it's 144 pages long. Uh, I'm on chapter, what is it? I keep moving past the number, 15 in my, in my book. And I'm doing my favorite thing. So there's a lot of bullying scenes and I've actually kind of fallen in love with the bully I'm writing to the point where I'm almost thinking about alternating the story a little bit and having the whole story take place through the uh, <clears throat> through the bully's perspective. But then I changed my mind. I'm like, I already wrote a lot, you know, and just to start anew right now would be such a shame. But like all the best parts I've written or I, that I've wrote so far or I, that I've written, I think that's the right way to say it. Um, I think I had it right the first time. Um, now I forgot what I was saying. Well, well basically what I'm trying to say is, um, what was I saying? The way that I, I've written the story so far is, is fine. And uh, even though everything that I've, oh, here it is. Everything that I've written from the bully's perspective is just like gorgeous. I love, what I've done with the bully, you know? I like the bully's backstory, even though his father, which is an actual character in the book, is not fleshed out at all. The only fleshed out character in this book is uh, Mark. And Mark is a bully. And he terrorizes these two kids with his buddy, uh, Warren. And uh, it's it's just fantastic. The, the bully scenes are amazing. And I don't know why, my bully scenes are so good, but my other scenes with the other kids are not so good. I, I don't quite understand that. It's just a rough draft, so right now I'm just trying to tell myself the story. Um, but I do find that funny how I, I, I relate more to bullies than I do to uh, other like victims. I'm not saying I was a bully in school. In fact, I was the exact opposite. I was bullied in school, but uh, I, I don't know why I'm able to write bullies more maybe it's because I understand them better you know I was a bully to my younger brother and sister I wasn't the nicest brother that's for sure it, it took me a little while to become a good brother but uh uh as the more I'm saying that I'm like wait no I'm a damn good brother oh, hold on I'm dogging myself but that's besides the point um I just I, I don't know why I relate to the bullies more and I can write them better you know, like their struggles are real, you know, like, like the kids that are terrorized, I'm trying to make their life bad. But as much as I feel for the main character, like the sympathy I have for the main characters, 
I'd have a lot of sympathy, maybe even more sympathy for the bully. Because the bully, his father's a a hard ass that uh like we used to beat him like all the time and he would receive the love his father had for him through um beatings but now his father beats him less and less and just doesn't care about his son and he tries to do more and more bad things in order to get his dad's attention but his dad doesn't give him the attention that he wants hold on one second lula we'll go downstairs in a second Sorry guys, um, I'm talking to my dog, Lula. She's on the bed. Say hi, Lou. She goes absolutely silent. Okay, cool. She doesn't want to say hi to you guys. <laughs> um, I'm doing a really good job with the bully is what I'm trying to say. The bully's really fleshed out. I told a sad story about his grandfather and because the bully wears a ring on his finger and, uh, and uh, the ring is his grandfather's World War uh, Two ring, so he wears it uh, for the you know because he loved his grandfather so much, and that was an heirloom that his fa grandfather gave to him. He wears it and uh, he beats kids with it. <laughs> he calls it his. Uh, he doesn't really call it anything. I haven't decided to call it something yet. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? You can say hi. Just bark once. She's tilting her head like, I have no idea what you're saying. I am a dog. <laughs> um, she's whining because she wants to go see James. And here she comes. What's wrong, Lou? What's wrong, baby girl? She's been crying so much. And now that she's out of her cage and she's gone for a walk, now she's just so upset and I don't know why she's so upset but she's a good girl she's a great girl sorry I'm weird I kiss my dog kiss my doggy um anyways um Lula I did release a uh, Sean Hudson collection today because I had no idea I didn't do a Sean Hudson collection yet and I own quite a few books by him so um, I do need Victims still, which sounds like a really good book to me. I haven't really read the synopsis, I just looked at the cover and was like, that's a book I need. But, uh, I really want that book. Um, but other than that, I own a lot of his books, so, um, I don't own um, them all, but I own quite a few. Um, but, uh, anyways, that's besides the point. Um, I'm, I have no idea how this this story is going to end. I'll be as surprised as you guys are while you guys are reading it. Because th this story has, like, no direction at all. Like, it will when it's finished, obviously. You know, you guys will be reading it and being like, where is he going to go with this? And while I was writing it, I was trying to figure that out as well. Like, where am I going to go with this? Um, I have no idea if I want to end it in a certain setting or not. Um, if you guys watch my videos, I kind of spoiled a little bit and told you where I think it's going to end, but I think I'm going to end it somewhere else now and have it more of a, I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. Um, there's so many things I can do and I'm trying to go away from the ending I originally planned because that's how everyone's going to perceive the ending. That's what people are going to think is going to happen. And I want to go into a different direction so that doesn't happen. You know? And something else happens. I don't even know who's going to die and who's not going to die. You know, I had a, an idea, a general idea who was going to live and who was going to die. But now I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. Because I've fallen in love with the bully. Which is weird. I, I never thought I'd fall in love with the bully. But I just feel for him, you know? Like, his mom left when he was young, his dad doesn't care about him anymore, even though he did at one point, because he beat him all the time, because he cared, but now he doesn't care, so he, he doesn't know how to reciprocate not being beat. So he takes his anger and frustration and takes it out on others. He's got a friend who gives him medication, so he takes medicine that he shouldn't be taking, he's not prescribed it, so... um. I haven't really dove into the drug taking yet, 
I probably should do that soon. I don't know how people uh, that aren't supposed to be taking prescribed medicine re like react to taking prescribed medicine because when I take like a volume or I take a, I said that weird, but you know what I mean. Um, it, when I take all these antidepressants and, and all these other things, um, these, these anxiety relaxers like Xanax and stuff, it doesn't bother me as much as it makes other people looped out, you know? Of course, they're taking much higher dosages of what I take, but, uh, besides the point, um, but, uh, yeah, the story's going very well. Um, I like the direction it's going. I'm on a bully scene right now where, uh, I'm not gonna give it away, but a kid, and I'm not saying which kid, a kid is getting beaten up and things are gonna turn real quick for Mark, the bully. Um, fun fact, I decided to name Mark, Mark, because I used to have kind of like an alter ego named Mark, where it was just like this tough guy version of myself. And I got it from people calling me Marks in school because uh, I'd have like marks all over my arm and bruises and scratches and stuff like that. And they'd call me Marks. Um, so I just went with Mark for a while. That was like kind of my alter ego. I acted all cool and smooth, like I wasn't myself. And that's kind of how I imagine Mark in this book, even though that's not how he's portrayed at all. But uh, I, I just, I, I have a little bit of myself in the character, so maybe that's why I relate to him a little bit more. Obviously my family is better than his, and I didn't have a grandfather that was in the World War II, so not in though, but in World War II. <laughs> I can't talk today, guys. But uh, yeah, um, I wrote 1300 words today. Um. I'm on page 144, which is pretty good. It's pretty damn good, if I'd say so myself. I started writing this story last year around, I wanna say I started in the summer, and now I'm in January, where, which is funny, because that's when uh, my book takes place, is in January. Um, and it's going very, very well. Um, I think I need to describe settings more. That's something my teacher said once that I, I kind of need practice in. So I need to uh, practice my uh, settings a lot more. And uh, um, yeah, my dialogue is really good though. My teacher told me I have very, very good dialogue. Like, like I have very good dialogue and it's strange because I've had no practice or not practice, but no, no one's t taught me how to do it. And I told her that I just like, I, I talk it all out in my head and out loud. And I try to, to write it like someone who's talking would talk, you know, it, it's simple. But she says that it that takes time to learn at least the level of dialogue I can do. And I thought that was really nice of her to say. I don't know if she was just being nicer or something. Maybe my writing is crap and the only good thing is dialogue or maybe that's the only decent thing. But uh, I don't know. My teacher was really nice though. Uh, she works with Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. I won't call her out in the video because I don't want you guys going and talking to her and like being like, Nick said you said this. And is it true? I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I, got, I don't, you don't got her email, but I'm just gonna say her first name, Megan. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, she was an awesome teacher, and if uh, Chilling Tales has a writing class, because they do writing classes every now and then, I have done two uh, in, in a row so far. Um, I've taken two. There was one in the summer, and then one in later in the or it was one in the beginning of the year and one in the middle of the year, and I took them both. In those classes, I wrote no smoking which is about this guy who smokes and the company restricts smoking on the campus, so, uh, or on the, the, the property, and he decides to smoke anyways. Well, spoiler, he decides to smoke anyways. Um, then the second class, where my writing got a ton better, and mostly because I'm really good at first person, so I don't know why I'm good at first person, I just am. But I wrote Highway to Hell. 
And uh, I got the idea a after taking a trip to Hell, Michigan, and was like, how come no one has written a story about going to Hell, Michigan? It's such an easy thing to do. Like, you just, it's, it's basically describing a setting, you know? And then you can decide what happens to the characters. But uh, I thought I did a really good job with Highway to Hell. Um, and yeah, and they're all, uh, Highway to Hell and No Smoking are in my, uh, my story collection that I'm releasing soon. Um, this summer I'm hoping to release it. Um, I have to get it edited and formatted one more time, or, uh, edited one more time, formatted for the first time. And then I'm gonna go to KDP, which is Kindle Device Publishing or something like that. I forget what it's called. But I'm gonna go to there and figure out how that all works, and they will sell my ebook and paperbacks of the book, and and I'll probably buy a slew of them, or at least maybe I'll be given some. I don't know how it all works, but if I get some copies, um, maybe I'll give some away um, to some of my subscribers. So if you any of my subscribers want a copy of my book, let me know if. If uh, people want a beta read, because um, I'm looking for beta readers, I have one guaranteed beta reader right now. The other person, I'm still waiting on their uh, them to message me back saying if they're going to do it or not. I don't think they're going to do it, though, because I think they already have too much on their plate because they're about to do a read through of Salem's Lot. So with a buddy read with, of Salem's Lot, which I really wanted to do because I love, I haven't read Salem's Lot yet and that's a book uh, by Stephen King that I need to read. But uh, I'm not big on Stephen King right now. I was like, I had a huge phase where I was reading all his books and now I'm kind of doing a coming of age thing. And uh, The Body is actually a audio book that I'm listening to, the different seasons, but I'm on uh, apt pupil. Like I think that's either apartment pupil or I think it's apartment pupil and I am um, not really interested in the story so I'm trying to get through it and then I can finally do the body and then I'll review the body as a separate thing and then do a different seasons review the Shawshank Redemption was great spoiler it was great <laughs> um, but uh, yeah um, this is a writing vlog though so I talked a little bit about other everything you know those are my two owls right there they sit on my bookcase and protect my books. Um, what else is there to say other than I wrote 1,300 words today? I wrote 700 yesterday. So combined 2,000 words, which is kind of the goal for two days because I want 1,000 every single day. So um, that's my goal at least is to write 1,000 words a day. Sometimes it, I, it gets away from me and I write 2,000. Sometimes I have really sad days like yesterday where I only write 700 words. So... But uh, in the end, I wrote, I made up for the 300 I didn't get done yesterday. I made it up today, and so, yeah. Um, so I'm at 43,011 words written so far. Um, it's going very well, um, very, very well. Um, like I said, I'm writing a bully scene, and that's going well. Um, I'm surprised by like, because um, there's two books that I'm thinking of right now, and that's Fear by Ronald Kelly and then Tony Urban's Within the Woods, which I'm currently reading. As you can see, I'm pretty far in the book. There's my bookmarker right there. I am 70% through the book, according to Goodreads, and I have 100 pages left to go. Well, a little bit more, less, a little bit less than uh, 100 pages left to go. It's like, it's like a 97 pages or something like that. Stop crying, baby girl. Stop crying. Stop crying. Stop crying. Sorry, if you hear patting, it's me patting my dog on the belly and not beating her to be silent. I am not cruel. <laughs> I am a good dog owner, darn it. Dog darn it. Whatever, I can't talk today, guys. Um, wow, we're at around 20 minute mark. That is unbelievable. Um, I don't know what else to say though, so I think I'm gonna end it soon. Um, I'll just briefly talk about my coming of age TBR. Um, 
Like I said, I'm reading Within the Woods, which is a coming of age story by Tony Urban. And Tony Urban, um, funny thing is his all of his other books, like basically all of his books are a part of a series called The Life of the Dead Books. He's written one through five. He also has another book called Descent into Darkness. I don't know what that's about, but this is his really kind of like this is one of his first standalones, I think, uh, other than Descent into Darkness. And it's really good. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of issues with the way it was edited, or at least the copy I have is really poorly edited. Um, there's words miss like letters missing from words. There's wrong letters and words. There's missing italicis, italics. Um, so you don't know when someone's thinking something unless, of course, he sa it says Roy thought. Well, not Roy, because Roy is a character. Garrett thought, you know. Um, Shush, baby girl. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm reading Within the Woods. The next... Chad Lutsky. I'm actually probably going to start reading it tonight because I'm very interested in seeing what it's about. Um, so I'm going to read the first couple of pages and then put it down and finish uh, Within the Woods. Excuse me. Then, I have a book I got from Goodwill, which I did not know it was a rare, oh, well, not a rare book per se. Um, I think it's a book club edition. Um, it's a really nice edition, that's for sure. Um... I'm trying to get to the this was copyrighted in 1989 this is the first publishing um the illustrations were made by um the author so that's pretty cool um but there's this like really pretty map on the inside of where the book takes place very pretty um and I hear great things about this author. Um, it's Thomas Tryon. Um, and uh, it's The Night of the Moonbow by Thomas Tryon. He wrote everyone's favorite Harvest Home and some people's favorite uh, Other. Other, the book is called Other. We're gonna go downstairs in a minute and eat, okay? Stop me crying. Um, she's gonna cry anyways. Stop crying, stop crying. Thomas Tryon is an author I've been wanting to check out ever since I heard about Harvest Home. Everyone says Harvest Home is a great October read and I don't doubt them because I wanna read it. But I found this at a Goodwill not knowing what I found. Um, I was just like Thomas Tryon, a lot of people talk about him, uh, he wrote Harvest Home, let me pick it up. And it's not in the best condition, it has a huge rip down the side because I found this in a salvation bin, like it was a big black bin and it was tossed and there was a book like laying in between this dust jacket and ripping it, which I totally wish didn't happen, but it's okay. Um, but uh, this is a coming of age book, I did not know that, um, I did some research on it. And yeah, I read the synopsis too, which I can't remember at the moment, but uh, I'll read a little bit of this synopsis. In The Night of the Moonbow, Thomas Tryon returns to the chilling hypnotic mode of his pulse-quickening classic, The Other, the novel that numbers among its myriad, myriad admirers, uh, whatever. He takes us back to 1938. He draws us into an idyllic landscape, a sunlit world that evokes a, the hal halcyon days of our childhoods. A world destined little by little to be overtaken by the darkness that lies beneath its surface. It is summertime. At the Bible camp called Friend Indeed, nestled among tall pines of the shores of Moonbow Lake, the teenage boys of the cabin called Jeremiah and their glamorous counselor Reese Hartzig in every way a star, a hero to the camp for his athletic prowess, his commanding presence, even his reputation as a heartbreaker, eagerly await the arrival of the new camper. He is to replace the homesick bedwetter whose presence for the first two weeks of the season has cost the cabin its traditional place of honor as best of the best, holder of more trophies winners, winner 
of more prizes, mostly Bibles, than any other. But instead of the all around camper and great ball player they have hoped for, they what they get is Leo Joaquim. Ja Jaquim. Jaquim? Jaquim. A mysterious orphan who is a prodigy on the violin, who collects spiders, and who throws a ball like a girl, whose very presence, awkward, timid, smart at the wrong times, upsets the time-honored rhythms of camp life. What follows is a tryon is tryon in top form. We are held spellbound in the shadow of blossoming terror as the tight as the little society of books transform itself into a cable or a cabal against the one who has disappointed them. As they pray is awake, reawakened to the horrendous boyhood secret he has blocked out of his consciousness, and as the novel rushes it to its stunning climax, in which Leo becomes the unwitting catalyst of prime actor in an explosion of evil. I read that horribly, so I apologize. Um, and if you don't know who Thomas Tryon is, he was an actor back in the day. He retired from acting and became a novelist. And everyone was like, criticized him because they thought, oh, pretty boy can't write a book. Which he is a very pretty boy. A uh, man. He's a man. Um, but he wrote some really good books like Harvest Home. And then he wrote The Others, um, which was a movie, I believe. Um, but no one talks about this book by Trauma Thomas Tryon, which is The Night of the Moonbow. Um, it's a coming of age novel, so it's obviously a ha must read for me. And clocking in at, oh, I wanna say, oh, there's some pretty art in this. 306 pages, it's gonna be a good read. Um, it's six, it's like nine, 94 pages, or, uh, uh, 54 pages shorter than, uh, wait, hold on. I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. Yeah. 54 pages, sh sh uh, long shorter than the book I'm currently reading. So that's going to be, uh, after skull face boy, which skull face boy. And then what I'm currently reading, um, but this is a writing vlog, so that kind of took forever to talk about my TBR a little bit. But it's part, kind of a part of what I'm uh, writing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys have a good day, or had a good day, and have a spooky night. And I'll see you in the next writing vlog, or whatever video I do next. Alright, bye guys. Now I am become death, the destroyer.